Yo, what's happening, people? Okay, so I want to talk about Alicia Keys' new album again. <laughs> Alicia. Al Miss Alicia Keys uh, just dropped her album. I talked about I did a kind of review of it already. But I want to talk about it in a little bit more detail now. In particular, I want to talk about some of the, shall we say, life lessons that I think Miss Alicia Keys is trying to impart on the world. You know, there's a lot in this album about self-love, self-worth. And so what I want to do is try to go through the songs and, you know, see if we can figure out what Miss Keys is trying to tell us about life and love and self-appreciation and that whole thing so that's what i want to do today so let's uh let's do this all right so the first track truth without love now in this track alicia says the truth without love is just a lie and i think that's a way of saying that anytime you are not acting out of love ultimately you are lying you know in a sense that not necessarily like you know lying with your mouth lying with words but it could be lying in terms of how you behave maybe you're not being who you truly are because who we truly are is always going to be rooted in love and if we're not acting out of love then we're not acting out of who we truly are so the truth without love or what we think is the truth we might think we're being truthful but ultimately, at some point, whether it's in what we say or in how we behave or in how we present ourselves to the world, there is a lie somewhere. And I think that's what Lisa's trying to say with this, that we always need to root ourselves in love because anytime we are not in there, we're not being truthful, whether it's not being truthful with ourselves or not being truthful with others. I think she's probably referring to more to be not being truthful with yourself, if I had to guess. But oh, that's I think that's what it's coming down to. Anytime we are not acting out of love, we are not being truthful somewhere along the lines in our behavior or in what we say. She also says, I love you more because I know you hate me in the song. And I think that's a way of saying that although you are coming to me with all this hatred and animosity, I can recognize that that's not who you truly are. You know, I can recognize that you're coming to me out of maybe an insecurity. You're coming to me out of some kind of fear. You're coming to me out of some kind of negative energy. And I recognize that that's not the you who is real. So I'm still choosing to come back with love and counsel to your negativity with positivity. It's always about being rooted in love and being rooted in positive energy. So with Time Machine, I think the message here is really to go for your dreams, you know, because you, we don't get second chances. There are no do-overs. So once the moment is gone, it's gone. And that's not to say that it's too late. I don't believe it's, I personally don't believe it's ever too late. I'm not sure if that's what Leisha's trying to say, but I don't, I don't think it's about it's, it, it gets too late. It's more that the time is really now. Now, early you can do something. Early you can recognize that you need to be trying to achieve your great the better really you know because the more time you have doing it you know there's a, a an old saying that goes that we are most afraid of our own greatness and there's a line in, in this song where she talks about when you look in the mirror and being scared of what you're capable of and I think there's a lot of people out there who you know when they talk about being afraid of something it's not so much you're afraid of failure but you're afraid of succeeding because succeeding means change i think a lot of us can deal with failure but not everybody can deal with success and i know it sounds weird when you put it that way of course there's people who can't deal with failure as well that, that that's a thing but i think there are a lot of people who it's not so much the failure they're worried about it's the success because success means change and change means doing things differently and that means maybe you're not doing this anymore you're not doing that anymore you don't see these people anymore you don't see that anymore and this changes and that changes and that's scary that's a scary thing but you know there's another bit in the song where she's talks about you know you gotta when you wake up you gotta tell the person uh, that you love that you tell your darling that something's calling you know i think that the people in your life need to support that you need to be surrounded by people who understand that if there's something that you want to do and there's something that you feel that you're passionate about doing and trying to get out into this world then you just gotta go for it and you need to tell the people around you that this is what i need to do and if they don't understand that then that could be a sign of saying that maybe you need to be around different people easier said than done i know depending on your situation but fundamentally that's what it comes down to like you've got to be true to yourself because this is your life and once it's all said and done it's all said and done you know so you've either lived it the best way you could and did the things that you were most passionate about or you didn't and were most likely miserable throughout a good portion of that so yeah you gotta try to do the best you can every day wake up and whoever you need to tell, tell your darling in the in the, in the dawning that <laughs> something's calling, you know, because this is your time and your time is now. With Office of Forever, I think this is about being true to yourself at all times because, you know, she talks about we're born alone, we die alone, and we're trying to make meaning of what happens in between. You know, we can hate, we can love, we can doubt, we can trust. So we have all these choices about how we live our life. And we're not always going to make the right choice, right? We're not always going to do the best thing. We're not always going to make the best decisions in any particular time. 
time. That's just part of going through life and part of being human. None of us are perfect. But all these choices that we have to try the best we can, and ultimately it is kind of like with the previous song, um, Time Machine, that like this is your life. This is your chance to do something. And you are the authors of your own life. You know, you're the, what you do now, which lasts forever. Because anything you do, once it's done, it's done. You know, it, it's there, it's out into the world. It's remembered potentially forever, or, you know, depending on how many people it affects, but it's going to be done and nothing can change the fact that it's done so you are the author of that forever whatever you do what is that forever going to be is it going to be miserable or is it going to be joyous you know you are in charge of that and you can make all these choices about whether you choose to love whether you choose to hate whether you choose to doubt whether you choose to trust and sometimes it's best to doubt sometimes it's best to trust and you're not always going to know which one is which at the time you're having to make those choices but you are in charge of that choice you know you are the one making that choice and if you realize that you're doing something wrong or something wasn't the best choice you can change that choice realize that okay well maybe that it was best to go that way stop doing it do something else you know but you are in control of that of those choices you can hate you can love you can doubt you can trust and sometimes as you're going through it yeah like i said you make mistakes but you keep going so what is your forever going to be what is the things that you pull out into this world that is going to be done and it now becomes a part of that history which is forever what is that going to be and that's the choice that you make so wasted energy i think is about being in a toxic relationship and realizing that uh, you're in a toxic relationship and then realizing that you perhaps you spent way too much of your energy on trying to maybe fix that toxic relationship when what you perhaps should have done is moved on and i guess similar to the authors of forever you know you can doubt you can trust you know you can make you make the choices and maybe sometimes you make the wrong choice or what you realize later is the wrong choice it might seem like the right choice at the time but in this case with wasted energy it feels like Leisha's talking about a relationship that just is spent a lot of energy trying to fix it and then at some point realized that that wasn't the best choice and there's now stepping away from that because okay I made that choice back then but this doesn't have to be you know my forever you know this can be my new forever can be making the right choice now so now that you've now she's realized that she wasted all this energy you know and you know thinking back on it it's like okay now I need to move on from this. So Underdog, this is my favorite song on the album and for a lot of reasons. And, and I think this song is really about rising up, you know, and there's a lot in this song about people and how we interact with each other. We don't always, well, we don't always notice other people to, to be honest. Like we, we kind of go through life in our own heads a lot of the time. And I know from sort of personal experience where I've been in positions where, um, you know, I used to do deliveries on a, a courier deliveries. And I remember going to places, you know, say, Saying hello to people and I'm here to pick up a package da, da, da. and a lot of times people just like don't even look you in the eye they just like you know hand you something and then that's it they don't say hello don't say nothing don't even look at, look at you no nothing like that like you are practically nothing to them you're just there to pick this thing up and that's all they care about they don't want to no chat no nothing it's just like that's it and it's it's not a nice feeling <laughs> it's not a nice feeling that happens in a lot of cases I think a lot of us have been through similar things where we just kind of felt like we're being completely ignored in, in a situation and perhaps we've done that to other people where we've ignored someone just kind of walked past them and barely acknowledged their existence and we do this kind of thing and maybe not so much deliberately but I think if you live in a city it's just kind of how you kind of go through life but those moments where you do take the time to say how is your day or how you're doing or you know something like that and you realize that people have lives that are so incredible there's so much that you realize when you look up sometimes and a lot of the times the, these these underdogs you know the people who aren't necessarily the the top dogs in society they're not the they're not the ceos they're not the you know the those kind of corporate executive guys it's the people working these regular jobs earning minimum wage maybe even less than minimum wage in some cases you know the people who maybe deliver your pizza or nurses care workers things like that they're all doing these amazing things incredible things that a lot of times we don't really pay attention to or kind of take for granted they have their lives as well and they're trying to achieve things as well they're trying to do things as well so yeah keep pushing what's he saying now keep on keeping up what she loves what she says yeah keep on keeping up what she loves and similar to you know the other songs before just like realizing the choices that you make always trying to do the right thing like when you say hello to somebody they're not always going to say hello back that's just the 
reality of it. It's nice if they do, but if they don't, it is what it is. But you know, you keep on keeping at what you love and keep doing you, you know, keep being you and keep, and one day you'll rise up, rise up, yeah. But yeah, that's my favorite track on the album. I feel like I relate to that a lot. So three hour drive, I think is about to break up. I think this is a breakup where one side broke up with the other side, but perhaps the other side didn't actually want to break up. And that could be when then somebody maybe passes away, but I don't think that's what she's referring to in this particular song. I feel like it's, you know, somebody broke up with her and she wasn't ready to let go of that relationship. I think that's the uh, what she's trying to say here. And, you know, just going through, uh, well, going for a drive and, you know, thinking about it, you know, looking for love because, you know, she's need feel like she's needing love. I don't necessarily think there's a, a lesson in this particular song. I think it's just more just expressing that feeling of needing love when there's no one around to love you and the things that you might do in order to, to do that, you know, out there looking for love, which, you know, may not be the best choice. It might be the right choice. It might not be, again, choices. You know, we don't always make the right choices, but I don't think that's really the point with this song. It's just, this is the feeling that she's going through and going on this drive to, you know, look for something to fill that void that she's feeling, that kind of emptiness that this person's not here. So with me times seven, or me, 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 I feel like this is a sequel of sorts to Three Hour Drive because whereas that song was her talking about, you know, missing this person and going on this drive and looking for love and, you know, trying to fill that, that void. This song is really about her realizing that she's perhaps spent too much focus on this other person and is now realizing that she needs to put that focus towards herself because it needs to be about her. Me, 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 me. So I feel like this is her her realizing that and then shifting that focus from this other person to herself for her own well-being. In fact, there's a part in the song where she says, um, I should push my three o'clock to no o'clock because I, I don't want to disappear. So I feel like that's her just saying like, look, you know, I need to take a step back. So that's canceling whether it's work or this appointment or maybe it was meeting with a friend or whatever it was that, you know, you, you were going to do to take your mind off it. She's realizing that I need to cancel that because I need to take time for myself. I need to be me. I need I need me time right now because I don't want to disappear. Like I feel like sometimes when we go through feelings and go through a lot of these strong emotions that we do these things to try and take our mind off it. But ultimately what we're doing is that we're, what we're not doing rather is actually dealing with these issues. You might go to this whatever three o'clock meeting is or three o'clock appointment is and you'll be there but you won't necessarily be there. You know, just kind of in a disappearing amongst it. So she's recognizing that, look, that's not a good option for me right now. I need to cancel this because I don't want to disappear. I need to focus on myself, focus on healing, focus on my well-being because it needs to be about me. <laughs> me, 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 me. But yes, yeah, so I feel like that's a sequel to Three Hour Drive. I don't know, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but that's what I got from it. So Show Me Love is a song that I'll say that it's not necessarily trying to impart a particular lesson here either, at least not that I got, but it is very much about the idea of being in love with someone that's in love with you. So as opposed to some of the previous songs where one person's in love with the other person, the other person doesn't feel the same way. This one, two people love each other and it's a celebration or, a, or an appreciation of that love, that physical connection, that uh, physical or spiritual connection that, that two people have. It's kind of like a, a classier version of WAP. Instead of, you know, get a bucket and a mop for this. It's, it's just all about just, just good loving from someone that loves you and appreciate appreciating that and loving that and being in that moment and being grateful and happy and 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 appreciative of that that this is where you are in your life because it maybe it has been worse in the past and you maybe understand it could be worse in other circumstances but in this moment in this uh, case it's two people together that love each other and they to coming together and with that love and appreciation for each other and just being in that moment and being present in that moment to fully appreciate what is happening all right so so done it, i feel is about the coming out of a relationship or maybe a, a particular bad situation, but also not victimizing herself. So she's being in control of what is happening. Because she says, uh, I'm so done. God in my tongue is holding me back. So she's realizing that she, while she was in this uh, relationship, she was holding back. She was holding back what she wanted to say. She wasn't being her full self. She wasn't saying the things she wanted to say and realize that is holding her back and that's not allowing her to become who she needs to be. So now she's living the life that she wants. Now she's taking control and living the life that she wants. In fact, she uses um, I lost control, which I think was a, a interesting because it's not you took control, I lost control. And I think there's a self-awareness there that because I lost control, I can now take back control because 
they didn't take the control from me i lost it and because i lost it i can now take it back so i think there's the awareness of your own power and your own strength in that where it's not being a victim in this it's not that this happened to me i was in the situation i was holding it back i lost control now i am taking that control back i am living the way that i want to live i am in charge of my own destiny. I think that kind of fits into the themes of some of the previous songs as well. I am in control of, or I am now the author of my new forever. So I think this song is really about having that self-awareness and it's not always going to be an easy thing to accept in a lot of circumstances, but I think when you do accept that you are always in control of how you live your life going forward, you can't necessarily control the things that's happened to you, but you can control how you respond to them. And I think that's what this is trying to say. So Gramercy Park, this song I feel like is somewhat of a prequel to So Done because that shit, she's talking about in that relationship about being done with it and you know coming out of it and having that self-awareness. But in Gramercy Park, she talks about being somebody else to please somebody else. Did all these things that she thought this other person wanted to see and wanted her to be. But then that person ended up falling for a person that isn't her. She became this other person and that person fell for that person. But it's not who Alicia is, it's not who she who she's trying to be in this world. So, you know, realizing that and coming out of that, and then I think that's where So Done comes So Done comes in. And yeah, again, maybe I'm overthinking a bit too much, but that's how it plays in my head. But in particular with uh, Gramercy Park, I think this is something that a lot of people can apply to a lot of different situations, especially people who are creative, people who are say on YouTube or Instagram or any kind of um, media network, social media network like that, where you're trying to put stuff out and create content that people would enjoy. You know, you might find that one day you do something that lots of people like and then you keep doing that thing and loads of people like it but the problem is that it's not necessarily what you really want to be doing and so I feel like a song like uh, uh, Gramercy Park isn't just about relationships it's about or, or more specifically is about relationships but not necessarily boy girl you know or boy boy or girl girl <laughs> you know whatever you're into relationships it's your relationship with life your relationship with the things around you your relationship with your work your relationship with your craft when you are trying to do something and when you're trying to be with someone when you're trying to create some kind of happiness for yourself so I think there's a lot in there about becoming somebody and becoming somebody that isn't really you and the pitfalls of that whether it's to do with a partner or whether it's to do with um, a working relationship or any other kind of relationship you know you always got to be authentically yourself because even though it might mean that not everybody likes you or not everybody you know wants to roll with you and people might ignore you and things like that that's kind of in the short term eventually people who like your who you are and people who want to be around you will gravitate towards you and you gravitate towards them so it's important to always be yourself in any kind of situational relationship because trying to be something else and then people tend to like that and then they're like but now i want to do this and then nobody cares anymore because it's just not what they were there for always be be unapologetically 100 percent authentically you so love looks better on you. I, I feel like this is a song where Alicia's talking about someone that she's missing. Like as she's going through her life and making the choices that are best for her and her career, she's maybe realizing that there's this person who is not as much a part of her life anymore. Perhaps this person is moving in different directions. You know, they're going this way, she's going that way. And although she's achieving all these cool things and all this greatness, she still feels like she wants this person in her life. So she says, you know, can we stop for a minute? Can we be us for a minute? Because I think she's She's just trying to bring this person back into her life. I think the, the interesting part or the interesting question rather, which isn't quite raised in this particular song, is the idea that you know you could always bring someone back into your life if they want to come back into your life. That can be done. I think the real question is, is it a good idea? Because if you are drifting apart from somebody, there's a reason for that. And it's not always a bad reason. You know, it doesn't have to mean that you hate them or they hate you and you know, it's not always like that. It could be just, you are just moving in different circles and the things that you are trying to achieve in this world and the things that they're trying to achieve in this world are just not gelling. And it doesn't mean that you can never, ever, ever make time for them. But I think sometimes where you try to bring someone back into your life on a regular basis, 
that could, depending on what they're trying to do and what you're trying to do, that could start to hinder things. You have to ask yourself, what's more important to you, this person or what you're trying to achieve? Because sometimes, and it's not that they're trying to be malicious or anything like that, it's just how things go sometimes. Sometimes you have to be like, you know what? As much as you love this person and it's cool to kick it with them once in a while, that might be all it could ever be. Just every now and then you chat on the phone for a little bit and that's it. Or every now and then you meet up for a coffee and that's it. Sometimes people have to be a part to achieve the greatness on their side and they could achieve the greatness on their side and then once in a while just catch up. But trying to bring someone back into your life that might not always be a good idea. A friend of mine actually said this a long time ago to me. He said, true friends can grow separately without growing apart. And I think that's really, I think that's true. I think I 100% believe that. True friends can grow separately without growing apart. So though you might be moving in different directions, doing different things, you're not necessarily growing apart in the sense that you, you, know, you, know, you know you could always come and talk to that person or you can call them up and this, that and the other. But in terms of them being around you all the time and you've been around them all the time or at least on a regular basis, that might not always be the best idea for both parties involved, you know, because it's just the trying to, different things you're trying to achieve in this world. But yeah, that wasn't raising a song. That's just something that I added. But you saved me. I kind of feel like this is actually the same person she's talking about in Love Looks Better Than in Love Looks Better on You. In that she's talking about this appreciation that she has for this person who didn't give up on her. And even though you know times were hard and everything else, and perhaps this person had loads of reasons and opportunities to just be like, nah, I'm done with you, Alicia. Even though that person had all these chances to walk away, they didn't. And also it's somebody who I think Alicia can't really be with. So I think perhaps the same person in the previous song in Love Looks Better on You that she's kind of realizing that yes she loves this person this person loves her yes this person to give up on her but it's not someone that she could actually be I think she's kind of recognizing that as well but wants to appreciate this person for not giving up on her for being there when she needed somebody you know for being a friend or maybe more than a friend you know just showing that appreciation to who this person was even though they can't really be together so Jill Scott featuring Jill Scott this is a song where Alicia Keys sings like Jill Scott and then Jill Scott is just Jill Scott. So it's an interesting idea. I, I, I really like it though. It's, an it's a cool idea and I think outside of being very much a Jill Scott appreciation song, it's also a love appreciation song in that you know she talks about kiss on me, uh, love for me in the daytime, show off for love. So it's the idea of you know being in love with somebody and showing it off and you know being unapologetic about it. You know I think there's a lot in this whole album about being unapologetic about yourself and your happiness and you know not trying to hold that back. So I think it's a part of that as well you know show up for love you know uh kiss on me in the daytime you know in the daytime you know where everybody can see it you know this type of person says i love love right <laughs> that's what i think this song is you know i love love and appreciating that love and showing that love and showing that love to the world and letting people see it you know because it's it's who you are and it's who you it's what you want the world to know about you that you have this love and you want to show it off and show off how much love you've got because so hopefully it infects other people and they could have that love too. Maybe infect wasn't the best word to use, but the point I'm making is that hopefully it spreads and you know, everyone could be happy and everyone could have some kind of love in their heart. So uh, yeah, it's a Jill Scott appreciation song, a love appreciation song. And it's just a pretty cool idea really as well and a pretty cool song, so yeah. So Perfect Way To Die, this is where I'd say the album takes just a slightly different kind of uh, turn and different theme um, where it's talking more now about police brutality and racial injustices. References the Trayvon Martin story, the Sandra Bland story, but what's interesting is she doesn't actually mention their names and I think that's because this could be anybody, you know, the things they were doing were not that unusual, you know, anybody could be just on the way to shops or anybody could be, you know, on their way to a new job. This could be anybody, it doesn't have to be specifically Trayvon Martin or specifically Sandra Bland anybody could be doing those things and this could happen and it shouldn't happen. But I think what's important in keeping with the theme of love is that this could happen to anybody and we should all care about it because when you have that love in your heart, it's not Trayvon Martin, that's, you know, my son. It's not Sandra Bland, you know, that's my sister. You know what I mean? And it's not, not even like, you know, a black thing, but just a human thing that we should all care about what is happening in the world to other people because these stories aren't uncommon and and these are some of the names that we hear about, but what about the names we don't hear about? You know, there might be people in your own community that this sort of thing's happening to, and maybe you don't know them personally, but it shouldn't be happening. We should all still care. And whatever we can do to fight against that, whether it's to, you know, tweet about it. And I know, I just kind of take a slightly different thing for myself, because I know there's all these things about, oh, you're not doing this and you're not in this, 
here's the thing is that everybody has their own way of fighting injustices and maybe your way is to protest in the streets and that's great maybe somebody else's way is to write songs about it that's great maybe someone else's way is to tweet about it and that's great too whatever you can do to help whether it's to spread the message you know nobody should be frowning upon that like well you're not doing this it's not a competition and there's so many different injustices and so many different things going on in the world some somebody's going to be talking about this one somebody's going to be talking about that one somebody's going to talk about this thing somebody's going to that thing but the more everybody knows about what's going on and we don't know if people don't talk but before more everybody knows about what's going on the more all of us can have a voice in a unison that says you know what not we are not okay with these things happening and it's not you know oh it's just some kid and oh he shouldn't have been doing it and we shouldn't that, that, that shouldn't even come into it you know what i mean we should never be okay with a kid getting killed you know what i mean it, it should not we should not be just trying to get to a point where ah it's just a whatever that that should that should not even be an, equi an equation and i feel like when you look at some of these cases where that like with a recent one with brianna taylor you know when a verdict comes back people shouldn't just be okay with that you know what i mean it's like wait a minute if you're going to honestly say that the police officers did the right thing then surely the next step is there needs to be some kind of change in how police officers respond to instances it shouldn't be just left there it's not okay but yeah let me uh, <laughs> let me get back to the album now all right so the last song on the album called good job you're doing a good job good job so i feel like this song is directed towards mainly towards like care workers teachers you know parents the unsung heroes of the world and i feel like just maybe just anybody who does the types of jobs that most of us won't the people who work maybe the sewage uh, systems the people who work the streets and you know clear the uh, rubbish and things like that you know a lot of times we don't give these types of work a lot of thought so i feel like this is a song for the people who do this kind of work because these are the types of jobs that keep us going and i think especially now when the world's just you know corona just took over everything right and so that the world's in chaos i think a lot of us are realizing more and more just how much we depend on the people who do these types of work so yeah this is a song i feel like this is a song for the people who are doing the types of works that a lot of us don't let's say realize uh, teachers uh teachers don't always get a lot of appreciation as well so um i feel like this is a song for for anybody who just feels unappreciated you know people who are you know because sometimes we do a lot in our lives and in a lot in our communities but people don't always notice it and it's not so much that i feel like people are looking for acknowledgement but it's still nice to get it you know when somebody's doing something nice it's still nice to say thank you it's still nice to let somebody know that they're appreciated even if it's not required or you know you don't have to do it and things like that it's just nice to do things like that and so i feel like this is alicia trying to give that acknowledgement to that appreciation to the people who do all these uh, do all these types of jobs or various tasks that don't always go noticed but alicia notices <laughs> and alicia wants to say thank you but yeah overall though, i think this album is about love you know self-love self-appreciation loving yourself i think that's the main theme throughout the whole album it's not always easy to love yourself but it's always worth it you know then love can be complicated at times you know sometimes you love the wrong person or sometimes you're the wrong person and you might need to make a change being aware of that and developing that self-awareness is important you know self-improvement and understanding that you are in control of yourself you can't necessarily control all the things around you but you can always control what you do and how you perceive things and where you you choose to act whether you choose to act out of love or whether you choose to act out of hate whether you choose to act out of doubts whether you choose to act out of trust and what you choose in those situations and you might not make the right choice but you are always going to be in control of how you change things remember you're the author of forever so whatever your forever you want that to be trying to live your life in order to create that for yourself you know in order to be the best you can and to be appreciative of the good things around you and the situations that you are in it. even if they're not always great situations but the things that you can learn from those situations are really important and being appreciative of course of the people around you as well when you've got good people in your life and or just good people around you in general even if, if you don't necessarily know them personally and extending that love of course to the communities and the people around you around the world you know to people who are going through some rough times people who are going through some injustices as well and extending that love to them and caring about what happens because i think fundamentally we we are all on this planet and we're all trying to do the best we can in some level at least most of us i should say really are trying to do the well i think most of us i'm rephrase that a couple of times i think most of us are trying to do the best we can but we don't necessarily 
see that in the same way what's best for me might not be best for you what's best for him might not be best for her and so on so we're all trying to work out our version of our best lives possible which sometimes is going to conflict with other people but I think when we stay rooted in love even throughout those conflicts um, we could always find some kind of common ground to find a, ba find a balance um, that works for everybody so uh, yeah that's what I feel like <laughs> this album is trying to do at least that's what I got from it anyway I think it's a great album it's I would say it's probably one of my favorite albums of the year so far so yeah good job good job miss keys on this album but yeah that's what i think of it uh, let me know what you think of it you know did you did you get that same sort of message did you get another kind of message from it let me know but that's gonna be it for the minute so guys until whenever if ever peace